Hello everyone and welcome back. This is the third video in a series on changing our spending habits, or as I like to say, overcoming consumerism. We've been looking at the exact practical steps that all of us can take to overcome the pull and the burden of accumulating things we don't need. If you're just joining us, I highly recommend watching the two previous videos first. I'll link them in the description below. It's not required, certainly, but we're building a foundation here, step by step, in order to transform our relationship with consumerism. So far, we've explored three powerful strategies, recognizing the benefits of owning less, finding the culprit behind our purchases, and limiting the input of advertisements in our lives. Each of these steps is vital in our journey to want less and live more. In this video today, we're diving into strategy number four and number five. Strategy number four to change our spending habits is consider the full cost of our purchases. It's about looking beyond the price tag and understanding the true impact of our purchases. It's really easy to fall into the trap of consumerism where we focus only on the monetary cost of an item. We see a price tag and we think, oh, I can afford this. I should buy it. When can I afford this becomes our only filter to decide what we buy, it becomes very easy to overaccumulate. We look at the price tag and we think, I have enough money in my account, or I have enough room on my credit card, or I just got paid last Friday and it was more than this. And so we grant ourselves permission to buy the object. But the true cost of our possessions extends far beyond the checkout, especially, of course, if we're making the purchase on credit, but even if we don't. Because listen, everything we own adds stress, it takes up space, and it demands our time as we care for it and organize it and maintain it, repair it, and replace it. And let's not forget the mental load. Every item we own occupies a little corner of our mind this is an important principle. Every possession we own takes up physical space in our home and mental space in our mind. When we start considering the full cost of our purchases, we begin to see them in a new light. It's not just about whether we have the money to afford something financially. It's about whether we're willing to pay the price in terms of space, time, and mental energy going forward. That is why this strategy is so essential to change our spending habits. Think about it this way. Every item we bring into our homes becomes a part of our lives. It's something we have to clean, repair, and eventually decide what we're going to do with. Before you make a purchase, ask yourself, do I want to make space for this in my life? Am I willing to care for it and manage it along with everything else I have going on? Every new possession is a new responsibility. And we need to ask ourselves if it's worth the additional burden. Here are three ways you can put this strategy into action over the next week with some very practical steps. Number one, pause before purchasing. Before buying anything, take a pause. Some people recommend waiting 48 hours or 24 hours, but I tell you what, if you just wait one hour, you'll cut down over 50% of your unnecessary purchases. Especially if during that hour, you take the time to consider its full cost. Not just the price of the item, but the space it will occupy, the time it will consume, and the mental energy of yours it will require. A second practical step is to reflect on past clearouts you've done in your home. Recall all the time and the effort you've spent decluttering your home in the past. Remind yourself of the feeling of relief when you let go of unneeded items. 
Do you want to go through that decision process again for this new item? And number three, for the next week, before any purchase you make, ask yourself this question. Is this really something I want to take care of until I make the decision to get rid of it? Think of the time and the space and the maintenance and the care and make sure you are willing to invest that much of your life into this purchase. Reflecting on these questions will help you gauge the true cost of an item beyond its price tag. This fourth strategy calls us to respect the value of our space and our time and our peace of mind. And when we do, we begin choosing to bring only things into our lives that add value and move us closer to our purpose. Good? Okay. Let's move on to strategy number five. But before we do, a quick recap on seven life-changing strategies to change our spending habits. Number one, recognize and articulate the benefits of owning less. Number two, find the culprit, both the external messaging and the internal discontent that contributes to our purchasing. Number three, limit the input of consumer-driven messages in our lives. And number four that we just covered, consider the full cost of our purchases. Strategy number five, embrace two practices, gratitude and generosity. This incredibly important strategy offers benefits to our personal lives well beyond changing our spending habits. But let's keep our focus there on diminishing consumeristic tendencies. Step number five is about cultivating two key practices. Both gratitude and generosity have been found to be a central tenant in the lives of those who are well-adjusted, fulfilled, and content. They're incredibly important, so let's talk about them. First, let's talk about gratitude. Many people think of gratitude as a response to their circumstances. When things are going well, it's easy to be grateful. But here's the problem with seeing gratitude as a response. When gratitude is needed most, it is the most difficult to find. It's easy to be grateful when things are good, but when illness strikes or trials arise, gratitude becomes hard to find. The times when we need it the most are the times we enjoy it the least. So we need to see gratitude as not just a response to circumstances, but as a discipline we practice every day, regardless of our circumstances. Gratitude isn't just about feeling thankful when things are going well. It's about developing a daily routine of recognizing and appreciating what we have. This shift in perspective changes everything. When we focus on what we have rather than what we lack, our desire for more begins to fade. So here are a few ways to practice gratitude daily this week. Number one, daily reflections. Take a moment every day this week, perhaps in the morning or before you go to bed, to reflect on the positive aspects of your life. This could be a part of your prayer routine, a meditation, a quiet time of reflection, or using a gratitude journal if that's helpful. And then number two, this week, practice gratitude at your dining room table. Don't make gratitude just a private affair, but include your family. This week, every time you sit down together for a meal, share something you're grateful for. This not only cultivates gratitude in you, but it also spreads it to those around you. Okay. Now let's talk about generosity. Surprisingly, generosity functions in many of the same ways as gratitude. When we see it as a response to circumstances, generosity happens when it's convenient or when we have excess. When we have money left over at the end of the month, that's when we give some away. But again, generosity has its greatest positive effect on our lives when we think of it as a discipline 
that we embrace. Regardless of how things are going personally, we look for and we live a life of serving and giving to others. And here's how this discipline impacts our shopping habits. When we practice generosity, it helps us realize that we already have more than enough. We have enough stuff already that we can give some away. We have enough money already that we can give some away and still have our needs met. This realization changes everything. It is both liberating and it reduces the urge to acquire more. If you want to change your spending habits, make both gratitude and generosity a discipline in your life. Here are two ways I encourage you to try generosity this week. Number one, give away some money. It is fine to start small. Give away a small amount, like $5, to a charity, a person in need, maybe someone you appreciate. And then notice two things. Number one, do you still have enough food and shelter and clothing to provide for yourself? Of course you will. You have enough. And second, notice how this act of giving makes you feel and how it directly affects your perspective on what you need versus what you have. A second practical step to practice generosity this week is to donate some unused items from your home. Look around your home, find a local charity you can support or a drop-off center and donate items that are no longer essential to you. This act of giving will not only help others, but it reinforces the idea that you have enough. In the long run, I know that both gratitude and generosity will become more than a week-long project. I hope they become valued disciplines for the rest of your life, because that is where they will have their greatest effect in changing our habits. But this week, make it a point to focus on them, as well as the other strategy, consider the full cost, that we covered in this video. So there you have it, strategies number four and number five in our series. We've covered five of the seven so far, and each of these will bring us all closer to overcoming consumerism and leading a life that's aligned with our true values and aspirations. One video left. Join me next time as we explore strategies six and seven and conclude this important, forever life-changing series. See you soon.